I don't want to gross out anymore. Oh, ah. what you doing now under there? <laughs> I swear. <laughs> Excuse me. I just realized I had, had a, a, uh, a bad cuticle, and uh, mm -hmm. I was just taking care of it, hoping that we would be uh, not on this time. Well, uh, what do you mean this time? <laughs> you mean we've not been on before? This time we're in it for real. Oh, for goodness sakes. Hi, everybody. I'm, uh, who am I? And Laban this Johnson. Is, and, I'm Larry Bly. And, and this, this is Cooking Cheap. Cheap. Right, and we're doing uh, beginning uh, basic recipes for those of you that are afflicted in the culinary uh, part. Thank, Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, now I should tell you right up front that we're not going to be posting any recipes on today's program, so if you want to to, to get these basic, now what we're doing is just some basic stuff. It's right? more technique yes, than content. Than content, but you can still write it down if you'd like to, mm -hmm. but you'll have to write it down as we go along. But talking about writing, let's see what the viewers have been saying. Oh, letters. We get oh, letters. Yeah. Clara Richards of Kingsport says, enjoy your show. Just loves it. Can Kingsport, Tennessee. Here's uh, Gladys Staples. I love this one. R wrote in, said, uh, please send me the receipts of Saturday's program. I got so hungry when you both were fixing chicken, salad, and potatoes that I believe I smelled it here at home. Mm -hmm. Good. That's I'll a good bet show. I, I, I'll that bet. was a good show. Good so And yeah. also, that's where we introduced on public television smell -O vision for the first right. time. It's brand new. You may have it in your area. And what? this uh, M. Clowers of Roanoke, Virginia said, uh, Dear Sirs, you two are a fascinating pair. Enjoy very much. <laughs> yeah, all the people here at the station think so, too. Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, okay, what else we got in here? Let's see, uh, this is Betty Van Becky, Hook. Becky, Becky, Becky Van, Van Hook. Hook. And she said it's the first time she'd ever seen it, but loved it Oh, when she was watching. Usually the first time people see it, uh, well, you never know. Thanks also for reading our letter on TV. Oh, this is this from, is from, from Debbie, Debbie uh, Trudy Bakerman, and, and, and Debbie, Debbie. Vile. Were they the ones that sent us the, uh -huh. the they, file <laughs> so we could no, get out of prison? Know. And said, uh, thanks for reading our letter on TV, TV. Debbie and I couldn't believe it. It's got to be one of the biggest thrills of my life. <laughs> Do we have to pay for Laban's autograph? Uh -huh. If we have to pay money, we want more than an autograph. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Love you. Here's uh, a, uh, a big kiss right yeah, to the camera lens. Get a big blob of your money. And down work. your wire. All right. Uh, Elsie Pribble of uh, Evington, Virginia, wrote in, said that she just... Uh, enjoys watching the show every week. Well, we've obviously got all the nice letters this week. Well, uh, after, yeah, after that and That woman crabby laid one. us out a couple of Miss Crab from Richmond. Now let's see, what else? Who is that? <laughs> this is... Mrs. Uh, O'Grady. Mrs. O'Grady wrote it, said, uh, I like the format this year better than last year's. The rocking chair scenes were unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> Our general manager thought so, too. Okay, what else? Well, uh, Lou Howard wrote in and said, love your show. Yeah. And and uh, this is from Marilyn Bumstead. Is that what it is? <laughs> I can't read it. <laughs> well, we're sorry if we mixed said up said that the recipe name. sounded wonderful. Oh, wow. Uh, we just need to do well, look, things. Well, look, this on. is this is written on some kind of. Did you see this? Some kind of. There's uh -huh. a drug name on here. <laughs> Something we should probably be taking. This is from Golda Wolf in Gate City, Virginia. Said, "I enjoy your program. The rice dish must be delicious." Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, I got a fairly long oh, recipe, recipe to so I Let's guess cook. We better get over here. We could do things with eggs today, in and case bacon. you couldn't tell. And let bacon. me show them about the bacon first, <laughs> and then you can jump in <laughs> and, and then just you go can get right off on. my wire. All right, I got a pound of bacon here, and I want to tell you about how to fry bacon. You cooked that stuff? I know, I didn't mean to. It was an accident, Your Honor. It really was. This is a pound of, of bacon by the Dale of Valleys. Oh, and I want, some of our favorite people. And I want to explain something to you about bacon. Now, when, when you uh, are doing it at home, you'll, one of the little tricks is that if you put your bacon out on the counter for a, a little while before you have to use it, it will soften up and it will be easy to pull a slice off. Isn't that amazing? And always start with a cold pan with your bacon. That's a real important thing. Start with a cold pan. What we're gonna do is try to show you how to do this bacon so that it doesn't shrivel up on you so bad. And of course, if you use a real good bacon, it won't. Uh, and you want to use a, a medium to low heat. You don't want it real hot. If you turn the, the juice on all the way up and get it started, the bacon will just fry up too it'll, fast. What'll it, it do? Be, it'll fry up. 
Well, what just was the sound effect? Oh, okay. Just like that. Right. Just and shrivel up. Sort of like Bly is going to in just a few years. <laughs> now, anyway, uh, our pan is, is uh, going to do just fine. And now Larry is going to show you how <laughs> to poach an egg. Hit it, Larry. Well, first of all, in anticipation of poaching an egg, I'm going to do something else. What I'm eventually going to do with this poached egg is I'm going to make an eggs benedict. So and then, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare just a little bit of this first and put it in the oven, and then we'll play with the egg. Okay, that's is that what like we'll Benedict do. Arnold. Well, playing with the egg. Mm. So anyway, what I've done is I've taken a little bit of margarine, a little pad of margarine, and I've put it in the bottom of one of these fine little baking dishes. This is just the right size. Is that size. a little pat? Just about as large as. Excuse me. I wasn't going to show that bad. Just about as large as this baking dish, about as big as my hand. And what you do is you put one half of an English muffin in the bottom of each one. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take some Canadian bacon. A little Canadian bacon, already pre-sliced, or if you want to buy it and slice it yourself, you can. It doesn't matter. You can do it either way. And you're going to lay one of those in there on top, like so. You see. All right? That goes in. And then we're going to take the other piece of the English muffin, and we're going to put that on top, and then we're going to put a pat of butter on top of each one. Now here's where, this is not the only way you can do this. This is the way Lair does it. This is Lair's technique, because I have found that if you poach this, and, and if you put the poached egg in here and you put the hollandaise sauce on top of it and then you put it in the oven, your hollandaise and your egg gets overdone. So at this point, I'm going to take this, put it in the oven, and start heating it. This will heat up your ham, this will heat up your bread while you're doing other things. And that'll all be hot, and then all you have to do is top it off with your egg and your hollandaise, which I'm also going to attempt to make on this program. It's real interesting. And in a little bit, I will show you how to, uh, to, to poach an egg. Now, I'm not going to do it just yet. I have, let me show you first of all, I have some water on here and I've brought it to boil. And I'm going to take some ordinary vinegar, in this case it's just uh, white distilled, and I'm going to throw some of that in there. Now what that will do is when we get ready to poach this egg is it'll keep the egg from flying all over the place. Oh, the egg I white, see. it'll sort of hold it together again. is what it'll do. I'm going to set that off because I don't want it to do any more than it's doing right now. Okay. Do you want me to go ahead and make hollandaise right now? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and do that, and then I'll come back and do scrambled eggs. All right, to, to do a quick hollandaise, this is a hollandaise, this is a blender hollandaise is what it is, and it requires, uh, blender hollandaise requires three egg yolks. All right. This is always the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> three egg yolks. One. Two. Yeah, I hope they're getting, are they getting a good close? Yeah, they are, uh, of, the, of the way you separate that egg well, by using really the shells. Using the shells. I don't have time for all, that, right. for all that fancy schmancy equipment and everything. And whoops, we got a hanger. All right, three. All right, now we'll just set the whites aside. We're not going to be using those in this particular recipe. Now we need just a pinch of white pepper. <laughs> Just a pinch, don't overdo it. We need a quarter teaspoon, uh, well, no, we don't. We need one teaspoon of lemon juice. And I'm just going to take a little bit. I'm going to play it by ear. I've done this recipe so many times. You can squeeze a lemon half with your ear? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's amazing. I don't believe that's what I said. I don't believe that's what I've said. So anyway, what else goes in? A little, oh, a little salt. Where's our salt? You can tell we're real prepared for the program today. Just a little tad bit of salt. A little bit of that. Now, I have taken a quarter pound of butter, and you know how much a quarter pound of butter is. That's one it's stick. one stick. Butter, in this case, <laughs> because Johnson has a little problem with his hot occasionally, uh, what I've done is I've used margarine. Now, margarine. what we're going to do is we're going to slowly pour this melted, clarified almost. <laughs> it's been on so long. We're going to slowly pour this into there. 
And if this thing works as lousily as it did for you, we'll have it all over everything and well, back. When you, when you, you don't want to dump it in there, you want to slowly pour it in there. Okay. All right. And it should cool down just a little bit. I wonder if it's cooled yet because it's been on there for a while. Yeah. Oh, it's just right. Very slowly dribble it down in there. Switching gears. And you now have, look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Uh-huh, a lovely hollandaise. It really is. Stick your finger in there and grow someone out. Taste that. What do you think? Mm -mm -mm. That's real good. Mm. It really is. It's fabulous. Now we'll use that in just a little bit. Now our hollandaise is ready. Our water is ready, and we'll do the poaching in just a few minutes. Right now, we're going right. to go to Miss Johnson. Now, the bacon, as you see, is beginning to sweat and, be and beginning to fry. And you don't want to just keep turning it back and forth over and over and over. Leave it like it is. So you only turn it once. That's all you have to do. Now we're going to scramble a couple of eggs. Here's our egg. And we'll, we've got a little cereal bowl, nothing fancy. And I think uh, you can practice, uh, kids at home, you can practice breaking eggs. Mommy won't mind at all. Just go right in the kitchen. Just don't throw them at your baby sister. Now, using, you, if you're right-handed, pick the bowl up in your left hand. Here's your fork. Pierce both of the yolks and start real teeny like this. You're making just little loops inside the mixture. And you'll find that you get real good at it. You can even turn the, the bowl like this and keep the mixture from running out. And this is the easiest way to scramble an egg. You don't have to put any um, water or milk in it. Now, if you're, ex you know, if you're trying to extend your budget, you can extend the eggs by adding a little um, milk or anything like that. But this is all scrambled now, and we're going to put it right over into our little... Teflon pan, and we've got a tablespoon of margarine in there, and the heat is up pretty high on it, and to scramble, you just stir the mixture around lightly, and different people like uh, scrambled eggs a different consistency. Larry, I think I might need a plate. Okay. And uh, notice how they are scrambling up to the middle. Easiest thing in the world. Now, if you want to be real extravagant on this, at this point where we're right now, just about right before it's done, you could add another tablespoonful of butter if you want a real buttery flavor. But you see, that's just scrambled up real pretty. At this point, the eggs are soft scrambled. A lot of people, including me, that's the way I like, like them. a soft right scrambled there. egg. And you know, it's very difficult to get soft scrambled. I find that a lot of cooks will cook eggs the way they like them, irrespective of, right. of how you ask for them. And I hate them when they've been laying on there and they get real hard. Right. I don't like that because they lose their flavor and their taste and their consistency. And, and I see how soft sure, that is. Now, because another thing, even after you take the eggs out of the pan and put them on the plate, they'll continue to cook on the plate that's from right. the heat within themselves. So that's what you do when you scramble an egg. Go very slowly and stop while it's still soft. If you like a real hard scrambled egg, you can let it go a little bit longer than that, but they'll cook on your plate before you can serve them. Our bacon is doing really well, and in a little while we will... Um, come over here and turn the slices of bacon, but in the meantime, Larry will show you how to do something else. Okay, what we're gonna do right now is we're going to, we're gonna poach some eggs. And this is a little unusual to do it in an open pot like this, 
But if I'm going to make, for instance, Eggs Benedict for a whole bunch of people, uh -huh. I would be all week if I had to poach each of those little eggs in one of those cute little things. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing that, I do it in a large open pot with the egg just going right into the water. What you do is you bring it to a boil, put just a little bit, it's boiling right now, and what we need to do now is we need to reduce that heat to just under boiling. Because if that water is boiling real, real hard, like you see it right there, it's going to throw that egg all over the place. Now you see I'm bringing the heat down to stop the boil. And now what I'm going to do, and I've got, so, as I told you, a little bit of vinegar in there to sort of help keep all of it together. And I'm waiting for that. I'm just going to set that over there a little bit. In fact, I'll set it right there because it's right where I want it. And now I'm going to take this egg and put it in there. I'm going to do two of them. This one and put it in there. Now you see it's holding together pretty well. You see that? Isn't that amazing? Now, at this point, let that set in there for a couple of seconds. And now what we're going to do is get our stuff out of the oven that's been in here cooking. And that is the Canadian bacon and the English muffins. I should have put one more piece on top of that. Sometimes I use two pieces, sometimes just one like I have today. Now that's nice and hot. Now while we're waiting for the eggs to become just right, what I'm going to do is I'm taking a little bit of asparagus and we're going to work that around on each of each side of this. Be careful you don't burn yourself. And you can also put that in earlier if you want to, but I find that it has a tendency to overcook and to stick to the side of, of the little pan. There we go. I'm going to move this back now onto the, onto the heat because it needs to be just a little bit hotter than that. A little asparagus on each side. And if you want to, you can get real decorative and work it around all the way around the edges. I don't want to overdo it with the asparagus. But anyway, now our hollandaise is standing by. You can keep the hollandaise in the refrigerator, but you've got to be careful because it has a tendency to get real stiff on you, and you'll never be able to get it out of there if you don't keep it so it'll run. Now look at these eggs. They, they're looking real pretty. I put them back on the heat just a little bit, and they don't have to be in but a couple of minutes because, mm -hmm. as you were saying, uh, they will continue to... They'll continue to, to cook even after you put them out here because this is, ouch, this is all very hot. And I'm going to hopefully take these. In. Now, as telling you as to when these things are ready, you just have to use your brains. It depends on how done you like a poached egg. Sure. Uh, you leave it in for a couple of minutes if you want it done all the way through. And if you want it very lightly poached like I like it and like you obviously do uh, based on what you just mm -hmm. did with the, I uh, do. the uh, scrambled eggs, then you don't leave it in so terribly long. And as you can see, it's holding together very, very well. It really is. Now, what I'm going to do is give it a little test here and see. Yeah, it's just the way. And it's a little bit runny yet. So you can test it by pulling it out. It's just a little bit wobbly yet. A little too lively for me just at this moment. So we're going to leave it in there just for another second. I have turned the heat totally off at this point because I really need it. All right, I think that's about right. Take it out, drain it real well because you don't want it to be watery, okay? And now you'll take it and you'll set it right on top here. There's one. Get the other one over here. Look at that. Beautiful. Lovely. Gorgeous. <laughs> Can you hear that? I believe somebody I think I had a massive it. sneeze in the back, back. No, I think they were gagging over the poached egg. Oh, wow. Y'all okay know. back there? <laughs> <laughs> All right, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Two poached eggs. Now what you do... Hey, what's that black thing on top oh, of that just one? just a little something oh. from the bottom of the pan. <laughs> now what you do is you take your hollandaise and you pour it over it. Ooh. Like so. Isn't that pretty? A little hollandaise. Hollandaise is like putting egg on egg, you know, because mm -hmm. really that's what you're doing. And there you have it. You have a very, very beautiful, now you can set that back in to, to uh, heat up some more, but not very long because you got your egg exactly the way you want it now, and everything is hot under it. So there you go. A little salt and pepper on top of it to taste, and you got it. Well, I think we've got enough uh, time here. Let me. And uh, look, this did not make an awful lot of mess in this water. If you want to see that, if, if as long as you as long as you make sure that you use the, uh, see, just a little mess, not an awful lot, and it's a much simpler oh, way. Oh, you mean you could serve that water if you strained it? No, 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 I don't mean that at all. You know what, though? I've done as many as uh, 
six or seven eggs benedict at the same time. Mm -hmm. I've had as many as 10 or 15 eggs going at one time. And that's how to get poaching out of the way real fast. All right. All right, that's now let's fry an egg. Oh, a boy. Tablespoon of butter. That sounds like fun. Here's the egg. We drop it down in real fast. Now, a little cooking tip. If you want to fry your egg uh, sunny side up like this and you want the yolk to cook quickly, you can drop a little bit of water into the hot pan, just like a half a teaspoon, and put a top on it real fast, and the steam from the evaporating water will cook the top of the egg. Now that's going just fine. We don't want Are you going to flip this thing without uh, the use of a... Well, I could. Well, let's see you do it. Well, as long as you're showing a methodology let's, let's here, let's let it uh, get. A, let's let the white set just a little bit more. You want me to flip it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you can. It's not the right kind of pan. Well, it is. Mm -hmm. you, you should be able to do it with that pan. That's not ideal. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. <laughs> he, did, he did it. Of course, he smacked the Dickens out of it, and it's now run all over everything. No, now look, I can take it right out. There uh -huh. it is. <laughs> That's now, not the greatest way to do it, but uh, it is one way, certainly. Now, let me, let me do uh, an omelet. Tablespoon Well, we're just going to have eggs upon eggs here. Now, here's This should really be... <laughs> we ought to get plenty of eggs here's out my, of this. Here's my folk. Well, I guess I'll just have to do it on my apron. We're out of... We're going to have to go on the air and bake for some more money, Bly. All right, two eggs, about a couple of teaspoons of water. I don't like a three egg omelet. It, it's just too much for my omelet pan. You do it exactly the way you were doing scrambled eggs. Scramble it up real well. Shake your pan. Get your margarine distributed all over it. It's a non-stick pan. There we go. Now. But you know, I've known people that could make a non-stick pan stick on eggs. Uh-huh. Now you need a, a, a fairly hot heat on this. Let's turn our bacon here before it burns. Whew, that was close. I wish I had my little turners. Well, look at, the, see how well that is done? Oh, it's just lovely, Archie. Okay, it's now. Wonderful. That is beautiful. Mm. Uh, again, the secret of a good omelet is to have a hot pan, and this had cooled off a little bit, so it's going to go right up to the last minute but you want to pull it to the side, pull your edge back like this and let, the, let it run down in under there a little bit. Larry, while I'm doing this, we might, uh, since we, we really, uh, we could look at the list of ingredients, but it would just say bacon and eggs. Yeah, that wouldn't make much and, sense. And uh, also, uh, remember, we're not offering these recipes, just look at them. And uh, let's see if the witch has got a letter. Let's see, while this thing is cooking, if it raises up like that, you want to pop the bubble. Oh, here is Miss Witch. Come on in here, honey. And let me, all right, now this thing is, this omelet is beginning to set. Oh, excuse me, I couldn't mm -hmm. find a knife. Did you miss Larry? Well, <laughs> goodbye, <laughs> chump. <laughs> no, she's back again. She had to do another one of her famous fly-throughs. All, all right. right, dear chumps. <laughs> Nice. It's cookout time. Yes, Me and some of the guys at Madison Junior High School. Oh, junior High School. Oh, oh teens. Mm -hmm. Pre-teens. Want to invite some chicks over for a cookout and some other hot stuff while Randy's mom and dad are gone for the weekend. <laughs> we know what we're going to do with the girls, but what do you do with the burgers? <laughs> oh, and it's signed Blaine Wellington the third. Well, Blaine Wellington. <laughs> we're going to work third. up some real fancy ones yeah, next we'll week. Yeah, we'll do burgers yes, next indeed. week. Cheese for ones and bacon ones and all kinds of ones. Let me take my my bacon out of the pan and, and oops, get back on there. And we'll drain it off over here. And we gotta wait for this omelet. It's still cooking. Okay, we got plenty of time. Sure we do. Yeah. <laughs> all right, now I've got some grated cheese. Ooh, you gotta put cheese in that yeah, omelet. Yeah, make a Ooh, cheese omelet and you know, sprinkle that's that gonna right be pretty. in here like this, just around over the top of it. Do you need this for folding it over? Uh, I don't know. I, I hope not. I hope I can do it with the fork. All right, now let's see if we can. Yeah, oh, it's perfect. 
I believe you've got it perfect. It's going to be beautiful. Now, you fold it one third that way. It's like doing a business letter. <laughs> Make sure you put the stamp in the corner. And Whoop. fold it in half. A lot of people do. I think it's a matter of discretion. But the 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 way they always see it in the uh, right. finer, uh, uh, finer restaurants menu books and okay. uh, now, recipe books. Uh, let's is that way. Ooh, it's beautiful. Let's go over and taste and of it. Have some of it. I'll take this. You take that. Okay. We got our eggs Benedict all the way over here with our poached egg and our fabulous pile of mail. There you go. Yeah, don't get don't get any food on our mail now. I'll just take a little of this and what am I going to have? Is it going to be egg or egg? Oh, I think I'll have some egg. Well, I tell you what, I'll try your little omelet if you'll try my eggs benedict. All right. And let me get my And you better be trying it fast cuz we're running out of time. This ought to be good and hot. Just came mm -hmm. off. Mm. 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 Perfect, fluffy, wonderful, mm. terrific. I think I'll have some Valley Deal bacon with it. Mm. Oh, the it's also a problem. Mm. That's it. Mm. We're out of time. We hope you enjoyed it. Bye. If you're a fan of cooking cheap and would like copies of the recipes, make a $60 pledge of support to Blue Ridge PBS, and we'll say thank you with the new Cookin' Cheap cookbook. This hardcover three-ring binder is chocked full of over 930 recipes that were presented on the show by Laban and Larry. In addition, you'll also receive instructions on how to download a digital copy of the cookbook to use on your favorite device. Pledge for your cookbook now at BlueRidgePBS.org or by calling 866-624-8366. Thank you.